Tonight, we are learning some new details about the deadliest known migrant smuggling attempt in U.S. history. 53 people died, including three children, all of them suffocating in the Texas heat, trapped inside a tractor trailer outside San Antonio in late June. News Asian correspondent Robert Sherman is live for us. Robert, and we now have a clearer picture of just what these migrants were promised before they climbed into that truck. Right, Nicole, and we've been reporting on human smuggling for a long time and talking about the dangers that come with it, how pervasive it actually is. But tonight we have a much more clear understanding about how exactly it begins and what the whole process is like start to finish. Pablo Ortega is one of the over one million migrants who attempted to cross into the U.S. this year. His goal was to make it to Tampa, Florida, to be with his mother and pregnant girlfriend. He never made it dying along the way. Ortega, like many migrants, paid for the services of human smugglers, $11,000 to get the so-called VIP treatment. He was promised vehicle transport instead of walking, more comfortable stays along the way, and they assured him he would travel only in small groups. They were told to cross through the desert first, which took less time. Then they told him it would be better to cross over the border, which only meant crossing the river by boat. From there, a car would pick them up and it would drive them straight to there. Ortega's sister Rosa says her brother documented the whole trip through text messages, photos and videos. And when they crossed, he told me they made it, that they were at the house, that the most difficult part of the journey was the river, but that they made it to the safe house. Ortega told his family that he was starting to grow worried about the number of migrants joining them on the trip. And that they only had to take a trailer, that it would take three hours and then a car. That trailer was ultimately the one law enforcement found in San Antonio this June. Over 60 migrants were crammed inside. Temperatures reached 103 degrees. Many succumbed to the heat or suffocated. Only seven survived. Ortega was among those who lost their lives. And law enforcement tells us that when it comes to human smuggling, you have to change the lens in which you look at this through. Uh, it is completely business oriented. It is all about dollars and cents. Human life simply is not of any importance. It is purely business for the cartels that are involved in this. And as you can see, it, there is a propensity for lives to be lost along the way. Nicole. Yeah, very stark reality out there. Okay, Robert, thank you. All right, we turn now to the devastating flooding in eastern Kentucky. And nearly a week later, many people still feeling the impacts, forced to live without electricity, running water, a roof over their heads. And now some school districts are delaying the start of the new year after several buildings suffered severe damage. Officials saying one school will likely have to be rebuilt entirely. The disaster also left some without power for days. Right now, more than 6,000 people are still in the dark. And we also know at least 37 people have died. While more than 1,300 have been rescued so far, hundreds are still unaccounted for. That is a number, though, officials think will likely drop once cell phone service is fully restored. But the weather, it's not giving rescue crews or survivors a break. The state will face a new threat in the coming days dangerously high temperatures. So here to talk more about how the state is coping and their response, the director of Kentucky Emergency Management, Colonel Jeremy Slinker. Thank you so much for being with us, Colonel. Thanks for having me. All right, it's been nearly a week after that devastating flooding. We've seen the pictures. What's the situation on the ground like right now? Well, we had uh, more rain overnight and um, it is cleared out. And now we're turning to high heat temperatures. So the lack of rain does allow us to get back to doing more rescues and uh, going around and checking the welfare of folks. But the high heat is concerning as well. As, as stated earlier in your uh, uh, statement, is there's not a lot of electricity and we have a lot of infrastructure that's been damaged. So we're concerned about people being able to cool themselves by air conditioning or fan. Well, you know, Colonel, you mentioned those high temperatures, that high humidity that's on the way. You know, what kind of impact is that going to have on, on those rescue and recovery efforts? Because at this point, you know, some people may have been isolated for days. Yes, absolutely. Um, obviously, to make it more challenging for the rescuers, they come prepared for uh, a wide assortment of challenging situations. So uh, it will not uh, stop them or hinder their efforts. Uh, we have set up cooling centers in the county, uh, as well as delivered ice to those locations where we're giving out bottled water. So that way, 
you know, if you're not unable to stay cool, you've got a place to go locally until the temperatures succeed. Well, Colonel, we certainly have, have not forgotten about all the Kentuckians. Uh, so much devastation out there. Before we let you go, are you seeing any signs of hope? Well, yes, of course. There's hope every day. First, the people of East Kentucky are very res resilient, and they are working very hard to improve their situation. Their local responders and local governments are doing everything they can to protect them, everything they can to get them help. They are staying in constant communication and, and making sure we know of all needs that their citizens have. And the state and the federal government is responding with everything we've got. We've left no rock unturned or any resource off the table. So every request, we're moving very rapidly to fill to get them to a better place. But Absolutely. yes, we are seeing signs of hope, although there's a lot of work still to do. So much left to do. Colonel Jeremy Slinker with Kentucky Emergency Management, thank you so much for your time. We wish you the very best, sir. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.